There are many things that are wrong with the brand new Corvette C7. But there are many things that are right. Hey guys, Chris from Gadget U, and I'm gonna tell you all about them right now. First on the list is a really small and incredibly tight, but still usable trunk. And speaking of small, the inside of the cabin really isn't that accommodating. It's small, it's tight, it's compact. Uh, I stand at 6'2", and I've got my seat all the way back in every possible way. Uh, you'll note as soon as you get in this car that the windshield is fairly narrow. There isn't a lot of height to it. You can't see out the back very well. Now these are special sport seats that cost extra. And the seats that come standard with the car, in my experience, are more comfortable. One last caveat, the heat from the engine bay tends to dissipate into the cabin on some occasions, especially on long road trips. Before I get ahead of myself and tell you what might be wrong with this car, let me tell you some more about this fine piece of American engineering. There's not one, but two LCD screens, one for the driver, one for the center dash, which by the way is touch resistive and a little bit slow and sometimes painstaking to use. And then there is also a heads up display that conveys the car's RPMs, the G's that you're hitting, as well as what gear you're in. For those with sweaty palms, there is an Alcantara steering wheel that has a really nice feel. Uh, it is a sport steering wheel, nice diameter on it. Uh, there is also controls for making and activating phone calls or activating the voice prompt and looking through different information on the driver's screen here. Exclusive to the manual or stick C7 is a seven-speed gearbox. This includes rev matching, which is turned on using the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. And it works perfectly, not only for downshifting and ensuring you don't get those sudden jolts forward or that head, head sort of snapping sensation, but it works great when you pull up to stoplights and you really want to show off. And there's also some standard stuff that you would expect maybe in a luxury car, such as heated and cool seats, a backup camera, a passenger controlled climate zone. And speaking of climate control, they've got these really nice little OLED screen knobs that display the temperature right in there. And perhaps the biggest or most notable feature in this car is that it's a ragtop convertible. It takes about 25 seconds to go down and about 25, 26 to go back up. Weather, eco, touring, sport, and track. And of those five modes, you're really gonna end up, or at least in my case, I end up using just three, which include eco, touring, and sport. And touring's kind of right in the middle of those, uh, those two, right? So eco uh, reduces the sort of the suspension and the, the, it makes it softer, and the, the steering becomes a little bit lighter. It's not a huge discernible difference, if you ask me, through all of them. Uh, but what's interesting about eco, and sport, by the way, increases uh, the horsepower ever so slightly and opens up the exhaust ports and makes the car a lot louder and firms up the suspension. But Eco is very interesting because if you're driving at highway speed and you're in sixth or seventh gear, it will actually shut down some of the cylinders in the engine. And it's called cylinder deactivation. And Chevy says that you can achieve up to 28 miles per gallon uh, combined. But enough about the boring shit. Let me tell you about the good stuff. It is, without a shred of doubt, an amazing looking car. But let me just step out of the frame here and let you enjoy. Now, generally speaking, convertibles weigh more than their coupe counterparts for rigidity's sake. Not so with the C7. That's right, it's just as stiff and strong as the hardtop version, but it gets even better. So how does the C7 Corvette drive? Well, let me show you. So in this car, there's something called the Z51 package. And that includes not only MRC, which is uh, GM's magnetic ride control, there is also an electronic diff that monitors the car through the corner and helps it turn 
much more compliantly. The steering feels very connected. The brakes are easy to modulate. That said, power delivery is, an ex is, is very linear. Steering is not muted. So let's give it a little bit of go. It's, it is another roller coaster. It's about as close to an R8 as you're gonna come for $75,000. For your driving enjoyment, we are gonna go through a tunnel. And that tunnel will include noises such as this. <laughs> never gets old. It never gets old. Hey guys, that's a 2014 Corvette Stingray with the Z51 package. If you can, please click here to subscribe because we have new videos every Tuesday. And as always, thank you for watching.